Hi everyone, I'm Jolene Cook. I'm a project manager for NEON. It's a marketing agency here in town. And I'm here to talk to you about uh, the I Am Carson River Watershed case study, uh, the, a case study of our social media campaign. But first I wanted to thank um, Brenda and Shane and Katie for all their hard work on the concept of Watershed Wednesdays. I think it's really great and I'm excited to be a part and thanks for putting it together. Okay, and now with that, let's go. Okay, so just to give you guys a little bit of background context, uh, NEON is an award-winning agency. Uh, we provide traditional and digital services here in the greater Reno, uh, Carson City area. And we really love working within the environmental and agricultural spheres as these are our personal passions. And we find it really rewarding to be able to do work um, that helps protect and promote our region's natural beauty. Um, and a little bit about the process is, um, what well, I'll be talking about the project is the I Am Carson River Watershed Campaign. And CWSD partnered with the NEON Agency to create a high-quality, engaging film that showcases the unique and beloved locations within the Carson River watershed. Um, and to give you a little bit of note about the process, because um, the campaign really was years in the making, um, from a, a survey that CWSD did a few years back to grant writing to receive funds for the project, to uh, idea generation and then implementation, uh, great campaigns are really our team efforts and they take vision and, strong, and a set of uh, really strong shared values. Uh, so Brenda, the campaign and uh, CWSD's program manager, she gives us a perfect summary here as to the reason behind the campaign as well as what CWSD and NEON came up with together to address the challenge. So she says, we surveyed our watershed community and found the majority of residents didn't know they lived in a watershed and didn't think their actions affected its health. This film celebrates the natural wonder of the Carson River watershed and in doing so not only inspires but also educates individuals in our community on how to take action to improve its health and water quality. Uh, so just so you know, we use this quote in our press release as it really captures the breadth of the campaign um, in just a few short sentences. Um, so now, here is the film that Brenda's talking about in the quote and what we're going to be doing of, um, on the case study here today. Hello! Did you know that you live in a watershed? Everyone does. Join me for a... Hello! Did you know that you live in a watershed? Everyone does. Join me for a one-of-a-kind walk through the amazing lands that shed water to the Carson River and discover why watersheds are important for the health of our communities. Let's start up at the top high in the Sierra. Snow accumulates here and melts throughout the spring and summer, supplying water to the two forks of the Carson River. A flycaster's dream, the West Fork flows through the beautiful meadows of Hope Valley, while the East Fork rushes from the iceberg wilderness, creating a whitewater rafter's paradise. Both floodplain and meadows act like large sponges, soaking up spring runoff, capturing floodwaters, filtering pollutants, and recharging groundwater, our main source of drinking water. Near historic Genoa, the two forks of the river meet in the large floodplain of the Carson Valley. Here, the river's water is the lifeblood of the ranching and farming communities. While most rivers flow to the ocean, the Carson River flows through desert canyons and cottonwood galleries, terminating here in the Carson Sink. Smaller creeks from the surrounding ranges also contribute water to the Carson River. As rain, snow melt, or irrigation runs off the land, it can pick up pollutants as it travels towards the river. This polluted runoff is the number one impact to water quality in our watershed. Clean water is critical to grow our food, to replenish our groundwater, and to play in the water safely. We're launching the I Am Carson River Watershed Campaign to ask our community to do a few simple things. By picking up your trash and pet waste, draining your rain gutters into your yard, recycling your motor oil, and by washing your vehicle at the car wash, you can keep pollutants out of our waterways. So, whether you're dying to hang out in Virginia City, hiking Carson Valley's trails, swaying to the music in Carson City, boating on Lahontan Reservoir, sampling Churchill's finest, or birding at the Stillwater Wildlife Refuge, your actions matter. I am Carson River Watershed, and you are too. Let's all do our part to keep our families and our watershed healthy. So we are doing this case study on a specific um, public service campaign, but there are some guidelines we can go over as to what's needed in general to create a, a, a successful PSA. The first step is to have a clear idea what one's objectives are and how to best get there. 
As noted in Brenda's quote above, CWSD's needs were to raise awareness of what a watershed is, um, specifically the Carson River watershed, and also uh, we needed to be able to easily share implementable action steps to educate and inspire people who lived within the watershed. Um, so the second step is to critically think about what the challenges are and what our advantages are within those challenges. How do we get folks to learn about what watershed literacy as highlighted in the survey and the various ways to protect it? The word watershed wasn't really well known, uh, but luckily what we did have is a very visually, visually appealing watershed to shout about. All these points and many more were the subject of many emails and meetings before we nicely, um, what nicely directs us to the third step, which is to come up with a good idea. And frankly, this is what I think is the hard part, and this is where my husband Steve comes in. He has worked in the industry for just about 20 years and knows where marketing campaigns have been and where they're going. Gone are the days of advertising where they, you use a ton of media budget to get the information on the news and in the paper, etc. Uh, Steve automatically thought a video was needed since this was one of the ways people are absorbing more and more information. Think about Instagram, YouTube, and even your standard commercials. It's ideas in moving form. And our idea had to connect to all different kinds of viewers to all different parts of the watershed. And Vanessa in the video does this with such grace. Uh, the video appeals to all different kinds of people because it's inclusive, it's positive, and it includes calls to actions. And frankly, it's just kind of fun to watch. Um, the reason I'm going on so much about the idea is because it really is central to the success of Neon's work, I think. And I wasn't really an ideas person before I met my husband, but I can completely understand how um, the crux of, you know, of anything successful really does start um, you know, with, it, with the concept and with that idea. So, I mean, I know he is my, um, like I said, <laughs> he's the creative director and he's also my husband, so it comes naturally to me to be proud of him. But it's a bit like the Olympics, that's the analogy I use, because um, if it looks easy and good, it's because there's a lot of talent and hard work that goes into it. Um, and, uh, you know, you really want to win over people's hearts and minds. So, uh, but in order to reach those hearts and minds, uh, this is where the fourth step comes in, and this is implementation, and this is where I come in. Um, and it's so much more affordable to use the tools where lots of people are to share the information on a free-to-use platform, and this is where social media comes in. The number one issue with them, but the number one issue is that the information has to be presented in a, a different or super beautiful or really simplistic way, since one of the disadvantages of social media is that it really is information overload. Uh, luckily, our task included the one of the kind uh, Carson River watershed, and we have the talent with the likes of the videographer, uh, Chris Swanson, and Vanessa Vancourt. So then lastly, the fifth and final step is to be able to make sure that you, have you make the time to analyze what worked and what could be done better. It's easy to get swept up into the next steps for all of our never-ending to-do lists, but this final step really allows time to pause and to appreciate the successes of the campaign as well as it provides an opportunity to learn from the experience. Now that you have a bit of background into the film and the PSA campaigns in general, we'd like to take a deeper dive into the social media aspect of the campaign. And part of the outreach and edu education part of it was mailing stickers to Carson River watershed residents. So we knew that thousands of people would be receiving a piece of mail from CWSD uh, with background information into the I Am Carson River watershed campaign. So we were able to use social media, one, to reinforce the key concepts, because it's really important to have people see things more, more than once, and two, to reach folks who are less inclined to use mail as their primary source of information. So with the information that Facebook provided us on being able to post and advertise within the Carson River watershed, it was location specific, we felt really good about how many eyeballs were going to be able to be tar targeted um, to be able to show the video and promote the overall campaign. And this was our primary motivation when choosing social media and Facebook as a tool to get um, eyes on the prize. But I did kind of want to mention that I don't love the direction that Facebook has gone in regards to ads and algorithms and privacy. And I do, but I do believe in using tools to the best of their ability. And the best thing about Facebook is that there are so many people in one spot. Um, but we were really intentional about wanting the video to have an inclusive and positive thing for folks to unite about. So that made me feel a little bit better about putting this on Facebook. So with that being said, Neon's number one goal was to deliver to, to deliver to CWSD was to get as many people who lived within the Carson River watershed to see the film. And again, here notice the clarity of goal. If you have this, you can make the myriad of decisions that you'll need to make um, as long as you have that guiding North Star to point you in the direction that you want to go. So from um, previous experience working on many PSA campaigns in the region, we knew that we would be easily able to target a demographic based solely on location, which was great news for us because we could keep it, keep it simple and we knew, we knew that we would probably get a, a good result. And all we had to do was post the video and then both bo boost that post um, to raise awareness about the campaign, specifically on CWSD's Facebook page and with folks um, amongst the watershed. But then we also placed an ad because it enabled us to direct people to the IamCarsonRiver.org splash page. 
that connects to CWC's main website, just in case folks wanted to learn more information and get a little bit of um, background. So after we did both the post and the ad, we were, we were excuse me, we were able to pull reports to see how many people saw the film and who engaged in CWSSD's social profiles. This is also another benefit benefit of Facebook's ad reporting features because you can't improve what you don't measure. Here is a graphic that highlights the quantifiable accomplishments of the campaign. And I feel like we achieved some pretty good numbers in relation to our goal of getting as many people in the watershed to see the campaign. There are over 150,000 people who live within the Carson River watershed, and we were able to reach um, you know, almost one third of them at 47,168. And we had over 90,000 impressions of folks who were on Facebook and Instagram uh, through just the boosted posts and advertisements alone. So just to give you a little bit of definition, reach is the total number of people who see your content, whereas impressions um, is you know, how many people the content is displayed, no matter if it was clicked or not, or if it was um, the same people viewing it. And a few other numbers that I that um, you know poke out to me are the organic reach was 7,329, and this means that the amount of people who saw the video from CWSD's Facebook page or from one of the shares via the community partners or people um, who liked the page and watched it and shared it. Uh, and then lastly, of the 47,000 people who saw the video, 3,562 either liked or commented or both. And now that um, we've hopefully inspired and impressed you with the achievements, let's go over what, um, you know, what we did to get there. So here's a picture of the splash page. So after the idea had been finalized with CWSD, their board and Neon, the script had to be written and the video had to be shot and edited. The filming alone took two days to shoot, with even more hours to edit all the different angles and sentences together. And this was quite a task between CWSD and Neon to write out the script and make sure Vanessa said the right parts at the right timing, etc. After the video was ready to go, we put up the splash page and connected that to CWSD's main website. And we put the film here front and center with the call to action icons below, and we're even able to create a version of the video in Spanish um, that was posted both here and on YouTube. And the Spanish version of the video on YouTube has 2,000 views alone. So the splash page numbers were encouraging too, with um, 2,615 people visiting the page from links provided in CWSD's newsletter, the Facebook ad, the press, or directly from people um, entering the URL into a search engine. Uh, other noteworthy numbers that I'd like to share are 98% of the people who visited the splash page were new users, and 37% of visitors clicked on more than one page. And lastly, I think maybe the one that's the most important is that the average time spent on the page was almost three minutes, at, three minutes and two seconds. Oh no, sorry. Oh, sorry, <laughs> the average time spent on the page was almost three minutes, um, and the video was two minutes and 20 seconds. So we were heartened by this information because of the majority of users um, who went to the splash page watched the film in its entirety. And here's what the, um, an example of one of the Facebook ads that we did, and this is what it looked like. Uh, the video played in screen, which was handy, so you didn't even have to push a button to watch the show. And a few minor notes are, the copy includes the announcement of the campaign, a call to action to watch the video, and then reasons to watch the video, i.e. to learn about the watershed. The follow-up copy that is included in the See More section mentions the stickers um, that were being made out in order to kind of compound um, that people are going to be seeing the campaign from various angles. And then it also gave uh, a link to the website to learn more information. Another crucial part of the success of the campaign came with the community partner outreach. Uh, we first put together a pretty exhaustive list of entities who had Facebook pages or groups um, who had a high amount of likes or strong engagement within the region and who would be potentially interested in helping us spread the word of the launch um, with, of the video and um, the campaign in general. So we created this as a shared Google Docs so everyone had access and was able to comment, etc. And then we direct message folks through Facebook and Instagram and ask them to be advocates of the watershed and to share the film on their feed or post something related um, that would lead folks to watch the video or find out more information. So the images here give a basic idea of the spreadsheet tool we used, as well as the Great Basin Community Food Co-ops page, which um, they shared the information on their page and they used it as an opportunity to talk about the importance of watershed with food sheds which as a local food lover, I just, um, I loved. <laughs> and so from their post alone, five people shared the post and the link to the film. And you know, overall we had 20, you know, 20 plus um, community partners do this. And that really helped um, you know, broaden our reach, especially in terms of getting in touch with people who would really care about it and want to do something about it. So, um, and, and I also wanted to say that this is where the quality and aesthetic and ease of the watching the film really paid off because it was super easy to just direct message people, put a link, 
of the post and then all they had to do was copy and paste that post or share it or like it and comment and it really is easy to um to you know help the community out Okay, so here's an example of what it, the Instagram posts look like. Um, we purposely put it on Instagram to reach a, de a, a younger demographic. 80% of the Facebook viewers were from 35 to 55, but 57% of Instagram viewers were from 18 to 35. Um, so as in the Facebook, the boosted post gave us increased likes and participation on the CWSD page, and then the ad, um, which are two separate things, right? The ad directed people to the splash page. And here's a little bit more nuanced information, and it's an example of a follow-up post that we did that was specific to just the sticker mail-outs. Um, we wanted to let people know that you know there was 30,000 stickers that were going to be landing in people's post boxes. Um, so it's a good example of the hashtags that we used in all of the posts. And one algorithm that we've used with success is having a handful of very personalized ones, like I am Carson River Watershed, which has 43 posts, and then a handful of slightly larger audiences, like Visit Carson City, and that has 5,500 posts, and then. A handful which has like the most posts, and that's an example of that one is um, hashtag Explore Nevada, and that has over 85,000 posts that you know have been that have used that hashtag. And we use these hashtags on both Facebook and Instagram. Um, it's a good idea to do that because it helps broaden your reach to people who might not know about you but would care about it since they're following that hashtag. And it's also a good idea to do mood board of sorts to come up with words and concepts and ideas that you want to use to give your campaign a unified feel. And so the words that we came up with were environmental community, fun, easy to do, education, awareness, wilderness, blue and green colors, involve moms and kids, shout out to local business, show various seasons and recreations. And so that just gives you a list of, you know, an, an example of um, kind of help another way to create a guiding light so you're always kind of heading in the direction that you want to go. Here's an example of the sticker. It's so cute. Um, and Brenda managed um, the logistics of sending out these 30,000 stickers, which was quite an achievement. And as a task, we also additionally placed roughly 3,000 stickers at physical locations throughout the watershed and a half a dozen so locations that were outside of the watershed, but relevant to people who might care about the campaign, like um, Patagonia and REI are two examples. And I wanted to be sure to highlight this aspect of the outreach and education campaign because this in-person effort really helped our decision to do social media and to kind of focus solely on this effort. Um, because we knew that there was going to be um, so much like complementary um, analog aspects to the campaign. And keep in mind, these numbers were from last November, and this was in pre-COVID days. So we used a SWOT analysis um, as kind of our evaluation of the campaign. Um, strengths and weaknesses, um, the S and the W are both internal factors that are under our control. And then the um, opportunities and threats are external factors, but they and you don't have control over them, but you do need to be aware of them. So I just share this as an analysis tool to use after you do something. It's also really good to do um, to put in place before you do something. But the reason we used it here is because it was the first of its kind. This is the first time we had worked together and the first time we had kind of embarked on such a big campaign. Um, so it seemed fitting. And then second of all, we're going to be doing a, a few more follow up campaigns. And so we thought that the information we gleaned here would help us in our um, future efforts. So as you can see from our analysis, we did we really did have quite a few strengths. We the number one um, that I had already mentioned was that we we had a high quality creative asset that was super easy to promote on a place where it was free, you know, to reach a lot of people, um, and it was really easily absorbed and it was fun to watch. Um, so that's the thing that I really want to be the takeaway is that the idea and the presentation of the idea was um, was beautiful and inclusive and um, easy easy to like. Some of the weaknesses is that we didn't have a system to do post management, like we didn't have a calendar that we shared with CWSD, so we, I wasn't sure if I was posting too much or when I should post. Um, and so next time we need to get approval of those posts and just, you know, just do a shared calendar doc. Um, and the spreadsheet we created had too many people, so it was a little bit overwhelming. We need to prioritize probably with new contacts and then people we want to create a relationship with, as opposed to just like everybody and their mom. Um, and then the last thing is we didn't actually have any SMART goals for this because we didn't have a baseline. So now that we have a baseline of um, how many people initially watched it and um, when they do another survey, we can have a little bit more information as to uh, create some more specific goals. Ironically, we're engaging in an opportunity today by sharing this case study since um, one of the opportunities we listed was to share so that we could benefit other organizations. So that's pretty cool. Um, another opportunity, I think, is that we can target specific entities like policymakers and specific audiences, not just um, based on where people live. 
And then um, CWSC can easily share the posts that they do on Facebook onto Instagram um, in the hopes to build that audience a bit more. Lastly, we'll cover the threats to round out the SWOT analysis. Um, there was a lot that were mentioned throughout, but we'll, the number one that I see is the biggest threat is that there's so much going on these days and not just on social media that I like to be really mindful about um, information overload and finding a balance of sharing information and giving people time to rest and process. Um, and I think the video does a really good job of that. It's so appealing and it's so easy to watch and get the gist of it, um, but it doesn't take up your entire day. But you can use the messaging and the, the notes um, and further up actions and follow up things that you can do. Um, and then lastly, Facebook especially, I think, comes across as polarizing, and I kind of put it as creating silos of egos. And I think, um, you know, just me personally and, and professionally, I think we, I'd like to be really mindful of creating complementary ways to provide connection and collaboration and authenticity amongst the leaders of our community. And I think CWSD already does an amazing job at that. And then lastly, I, the social media isn't the only way that people observe information, and there needs to be attention to press and news angles as well as word of mouth and reputation. And I guess the last thing that um, we haven't talked much about, but all of this work and effort takes, takes a team and takes time and money. So there needs to be value associated with this important work. Um, and I think this comes from leadership as well as the community at large. And so I'm going to leave it at that. And I'd really like to thank the CWSD for the opportunity to work with them. It's been such a pleasure.